In this episode, I'll show you how to customize a user object by adding properties such as first and last name or an email address and how to load users from a database. If you want to code along, you can download the source code of the previous episode and use it as your starting point. Of course, you can also download the complete example for this episode. You will find links to the source code in the description section below. Last time, I had coded user's credentials directly into the configuration. Well, in reality, that's a problem. Also, I showed you that user details provided by Spring is rather limited. That's another problem because I want to know way more information about the logged in user. Um, but today I will address both of these issues. Uh, let me start with adding a database. Back on the Spring Initializer website, I want to add two new dependencies. Spring Data and H2. So when it comes to Spring Data, normally I would reach out either for JPA or JDBC version. But since I'm building reactive web application, I will choose R2DBC, which is database connectivity that does support reactive applications. My next choice, H2, review, so here's my new Spring Data module, uh, R2DBC, and runtime dependencies for H2 database. So this is how it looks like in the end. I'll let Spring Boot do most of the heavy lifting. Uh, the data will be stored in H2, and here is the reactive version of the database driver. Uh, now, this is all I need. Uh, I don't need any other dependencies. But before I touch the code, let me create and populate the actual database. So, what I have here is a SQL script that creates the user table and adds a couple of users. Note that passwords are encrypted. More on that later on in this video. The script will be automatically executed upon the application startup. This is handled by Spring and it works by convention. That is, thanks to the file name, data SQL, and its location in the resources directory, Spring will automatically pick it up and execute. Well, again, no configuration is needed. Uh, for, for my application to connect to the database. Uh, but that's only because I'm using you know, lightweight in-memory database with all the default settings. Obviously, in reality, you will want to use some established solutions such as MySQL Postgres, and you will have to configure access to such a database. How to do that? This is beyond this tutorial, but I have included links down below so that you can check it out. Last thing worth mentioning is the table structure. Um, the table holds all the information I would ever want to know about the users of my app. If you follow along, feel free to add even more fields or simply tweak the table structure to your needs. You will see that it's all fairly straightforward and easy to change and maintain. So far, I have created the database and loaded it with data. Now it's on time to represent the user data in my application. I have created a new package, model, where I store the code representation of my data, so-called entities. I actually only have one entity, the user. It um, matches the user's table exactly one-to-one, -one, and it's nothing but a mad data container. So this whole object matches exactly the structure of the table. Each column maps to a field in the entity. It's just a really just a wrapper for data and there's a bunch of annotations, that's all. If you're not sure how these annotations work, check the link below the video, it'll give you more insight. Now, when I've turned data into code, I obviously want to manage it. As a minimum, 
I should be able to capture the credentials provided by the end user and fetch the corresponding user record from the database. So for that purpose, I created a new package called DAO or DAO. It stands in for Data Access Object. It's a fairly common practice to call it like that, but if DAO sounds strange to you or if you don't like it, feel free to name it differently, it doesn't matter. Uh, in this new package, I've created what I call a repository. In my case, it's obviously a user repository. A repository is just really an object that knows how to uh, fetch data from a database or insert data into a database. Um, the, thanks to Spring Data, it has some superpowers. For instance, it's enough for me just to declare an interface and the framework will generate the implementation behind the scenes. In my case, because I only care about um, user authentication, I need to be able to fetch user details by the provided username. Uh, so that's the method here, taking a single parameter username. Um, just to avoid any errors stemming from, you know, different case, lower or upper case, I care about data normalization. So whatever comes in as a username, I transfer it into lowercase and compare it against a lowercase uh, records in the database. I need this custom query obviously because Spring couldn't have possibly figured it out on its own. The question you're probably asking yourself right now is how the heck do I plug it into the Spring Security Framework? Well, it's fairly simple. I need to change the implementation of the user details service. So instead of passing a hard-coded user, I need to do something else. So let me check the interface, the contract. And I can see that the only thing it does is it knows how to look up the user uh, by the username. Uh, note the return data type, user details, which comes from Spring Security Framework. So I have to return this exact data type. Otherwise, it A won't compile, B wouldn't work anyway. Meaning that Instead of just returning my user entity, I need to return something that will implement the user details contract. I have at least two options. I can either let my user entity implement the user details contract, or I can create a separate class for this. Now, why would I create another class that represents user details when I have my user entity already? That sounds like an overkill. Well, there are two reasons. First of all, in the future, I will want to add other methods of authentication. For example, if I sign in through my Google account, the application will never get to know my password, and I will end up with a different kind of a passwordless user details object. And there might be other differences, which will cause that my user table structure represented by the entity no longer fits that new credentials or user details object. Secondly, and that's the main reason, is that I like to separate the concerns. My user entity reflects exactly what's in my database, nothing more or less. If a framework such as Spring Security needs a specific type, I like to create an adapter for it. And that's exactly what I have done. I've added a new class called Username Password Principle just to make it obvious what kind of authentication purpose does it serve. It extends user details and implements all the requested methods. Note these additional properties. These are my very own. I want to keep track of them and display them uh, once the user logs in. In my user entity, I have added an extension method which converts the user entity 
into the desired user details object. Extension methods are, by the way, a cool feature of the Kotlin language. Check the link below the video if you want to know more details about that. So now I'm ready to tweak the security service itself. I have created a new service package uh, with a custom implementation of the reactive user details service. Thanks to the user repository, it easily uh, looks up uh, user records by username. And I use the extension method I talked about before uh, to turn the user entity into the requested user details object. That really is it when it comes to the custom user details service. Now, back in my security config, I could just remove this bean and let Spring instantiate uh, my service. But there is a problem though. Uh, remember that I said that user passwords are stored encrypted. Currently, there is no way for Spring Security to know that you know, my passwords in the database are encrypted. So whichever password the user enters on the login form, the authentication would always fail because Spring would not understand that whichever password it loads from the database, it's not a plain text password and the comparison with whatever string the user provides would, would fail. I have made a few changes uh, to my security config. Let me explain. First of all, um, I'm adding dependency on the reactive user details service. Uh, well, while I refer to the interface, uh, Spring will ensure that it blocks my custom implementation which is essentially just a bean and extends this interface. Next, um, I declare a so-called authentication manager or reactive authentication manager in, in my case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, authentication manager is just um, a component that handles uh, user authentication and uses, uses the user details service under the hood, which is visible here. So I instantiate the authentication manager, and pass the user details instance into it. Uh, more importantly though, I'll also uh, declare that passwords should be treated certain way. So I pass a password encoder, which as you can see is an instance of bcrypt password password encoder and bcrypt indeed is the algorithm I used uh, to uh, encrypt my uh, database password or passwords for all the users. Um, and finally I had to touch the uh, authentication flow and plug the authentication manager you know, into it so that the spring knows to use this specific authentication manager. Finally, I'm in a position to update the landing page, which I have just done. So I removed the username and replaced it with uh, first and last name and the email address of the logged in user. This corresponds exactly to my custom principal object. So these extra properties are the ones I'm going to show on the landing page. So now I can restart the application. I have started the application. So let me go to the browser. Localhost 880. And this time I log in as one of the two users I created earlier. So let me log in as Alice. And the en encrypted password is password. So let me just do that. Alice password sign in. And yep, yeah, as you can see, um, here are my user details. This brings me to the end of what I wanted to show you today. Compared to the previous episode, 
we have made quite a progress. We went from uh, dealing with hard-coded credentials uh, with the minimum level of detail to the ability to load users from a database with credentials securely encrypted. As usual, you'll find a link to this final source code attached in the description section below. I hope you enjoyed following this video. Thanks for watching. Give it a like if you found it useful and subscribe if you don't want to miss on new content. In my next episode, I will show you how to customize the login page. The one that ships with Spring is good, but it doesn't have all the blows and whistles. For instance, it does not uh, integrate or provide uh, integration with social logins, such as through Google, GitHub or Facebook. Okay, stay tuned for that one and see you around next time. Bye.